so we'll remind me to stop five minutes early at the end, so we'll dab in, uh, we'll dab in Mariv. Okay, we're on uh, Bayes, Amud Bayes. Um, so the last thing that we learned, we, we're still in our debate about um, how many witnesses we need for, for Kinui and Stira, okay? We're still, in, we're still in the midst of that debate because what does our Mishnah say? So if you jump back to the first page, the Mishnah said, brought down two opinions, the first opinion is the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer. He says, Mekanala al pishnaim, two. Umashke al pi eid echad. That means stira requires one. Everybody agrees that under these circumstances, bia, tuma, requires one. So according to Rabbi Eliezer, it's two, one, one. According to Rabbi Yehuda, according to Rabbi Hoshua in the Mishnah, two, he says it's two, 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 one. <clears throat> According to Rabbi Yeshua, Rabbi Yeshua Omer, Mikane la al pishnaim, umashke al pishnaim. Right? So according to Rabbi Yeshua, two, two, one. Okay? Rabbi Eliezer says, two, one. Two. One. one. Two, one, one. Rabbi Yeshua says, two, two, one. Okay? Rabbi Yeshua is the more stringent opinion here. Right? Rabbi Yeshua is the more stringent opinion who says, to, I, I just want to get this on camera. This is a first. I just want to get some. I'm sending it to your father. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Okay. okay. Um, so, so we have these two opinions, right? Two, I'm sorry. Two, one, one, and two, two, one. Rabbi Eliezer is two, one, one. And Rabbi Yoshua is two, two, one. And this was, all, this was all a manifestation of how we understand the exclusion of ba, right? It says, the aid ain ba. How do, we ex- how do we understand the exclusion of ba? And the last thing that we learned was, and, and each time we say, wait a second, there's a connection between something and tuma, a connection between stira and tuma, a connection between kinui and tuma. So if we have these connections, doesn't that seem to indicate that everything should be that way? No. The Gemara said the connection between stira and tuma was to teach us the shear of stira. In other words, how long she needed to be alone with this guy. So for instance, if, if one, right, if, if two witnesses saw her walk into the room and five seconds later walk out of the room, so that stira is not sufficient for any ma'ase of intimacy to even have begun. For any ma'ase of intimacy to even have begun. Okay, now, interestingly, you know, there are all different, we learn through all different kinds of, <coughs> you know, measurements, all different kinds of shiurim for how long this, how, what, what practically, do we equate to the act of intimacy beginning? So the time it takes to walk around a, you know, a palm tree, uh, with the time it takes to cook an egg, the time it takes to swallow three eggs, whatever, you know, all different opinions. And when we get there, we'll go through all of the different opinions. And remember, these opinions were, these opinions disregarded the time it takes to get undressed right, the time it takes to get undressed. And what we'll ultimately learn is it also disregards the time it takes to create the atmosphere, to get in the mood, right? In other words, you could say, how long do we require this woman and this man to be alone in, you know, in this room? Well, I don't know, maybe if we go by, by practical experience, maybe it's I don't know, maybe it's 45 minutes, maybe it's an hour, you know. She has to be convinced, and he's got to, he's got to uh, woo her, and then, and then uh, once he woos her, once she's ready, so then she's got to get undressed. Okay, and then from that, all right, so, so the whole thing, until the beginning of intimacy, maybe it takes 
20 minutes, maybe it takes 40 minutes, maybe it takes an hour. You know, we, we, could, we could come up with all these different interpretations. The Gemara that we learned at the end of last week seems to say, we're disregarding all of those other, all of those extraneous pieces, right? We, we're not including in stira the amount of time it takes to, to reach a point of arousal. Why? Because if she's going in there, you know, obviously yeah, she's, warned, she's yeah. agreed. You know, she, she knows what she's going in there for. She's been warned already, so she's already going in with this guy where it's safe to assume that, uh, that she's, you know, she's sort of on in board with this. In the mood. In the mood, right? And okay, wherever long it takes to get undressed, we're excluding that, at least according to Toso. So we're just talking about a, a very brief period of time. Right uh, until until we reach the point at which we call the beginning of intimacy, right until we reach that point of the beginning of intimacy, it's a brief period of time. But that's but that's why stira is connected to tuma, to tell us that the stira has to be a shear that is connected to tuma. Okay, now so now having gone through the all of these connections we're still left with the basic machlokes between Rebbe Eliezer and Rebbe Yehoshua, which is one, which is two, one, one, according to Rebbe Eliezer, and two, two, one, according to, according to Rebbe Yehoshua, right? But the Gemara is going to ask a fundamental question that I think some of you have sensed before, you maybe have even raised it, uh, but it's certainly a question in this, in, in the way we interpret this machlokes between Rebbe Eliezer and Rebbe Hoshua. Okay. Now, um, let's go... Uh, okay, let me just find out exactly where we're up to. Okay. So let's let's look at um, what's the connection? Vikinas ishto vehi nitma stira nami iskish lutuma dechsi vinistra vehi nitma ahu lekama shi or stira. So we are on actually two b four, and we're going to pick up on two b four. Ahu lekama shi or stira kidei tuma. Okay. Now, Heshivu Chachamim Ledivri Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda. This is what we're up to now. Heshivu Chachamim Ledivri Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda. If you're counting down in the Gemara from where the lines get wide, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10 lines down. 10 lines down from where the Gemara gets wide for the first time. We have the statement. Heshivu Chachamim Ledivri Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda. That the Chachamim responded to the words of Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda. Ein Ladavar Sof. That's what they responded. What were the, what were the words of Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda? So in order to get to the words of Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda, look, look down three lines from where the Gemara gets wide. At the very end of that third line, we have Desanya Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda Omer Mishum Rebbe Eliezer HaMekana Ishto Mekana Alpi Eid Echad O Alpi Atzmo, right? According to the way in which Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda understood Rebbe Eliezer, what the Kinui requires what? One. One. So according to the statement of Rebbe Yosi, in the way in which Rebbe Yossi understood Rebbe Eliezer, what would it be? One, two, one, two, one. In other words, we have two understandings of Rebbe Eliezer. One is the way we understand Rebbe Eliezer based on our Mishnah. The way we understand Rebbe Eliezer based on our Mishnah is two, one, one. Two, one, one. And the way in which Rebbe Yossi understands Rebbe Eliezer is one, two, one. Two, one. Just get that straight again, okay? Everybody? All right? There's a huge difference, okay? What does... The way our Mishnah understands Rebbe Eliezer. The way our Mishnah... Under, everybody. Right? The way our Mishnah understands Rebbe Eliezer is... What? Two... 
one, one. That's the way our Mishnah understands Rebbe Eliezer. Two, one, one. How does Rebbe Yossi, Rebbe Yehuda understand Rebbe Eliezer? One, two, one. One, two, one. He disagrees with our Mishnah. He's, he's coming from a different, he's, he's got a different brysa, right? This is, right, our Mishnah, remember, a Mishnah and a brysa are the same, except the Mishnah got included and the brysa did not get included. In this brysa of Rebbe Yossi, Rebbe Yehuda, how does he understand Rebbe Eliezer? Different than our Mishnah. Our Mishnah understands Rebbe Eliezer 2, 1, 1. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda says, I have a different, a whole completely different understanding of Rabbi, Yos, of Rabbi Eliezer. My understanding, says Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, is one, two, one. And he's got an explanation for why the Brisa says one, two, one. Is it based on the connection to the Tuma or something else? No, based on the connection to the Tuma should require it to be Two one one. If it's four, one, he says because kinui is connected to tuma, because there's a juxtaposition of the word kinui with the word tuma, just like tuma requires one, kinui requires one. Okay. I there's also a juxtaposition between stira and tuma. I but that's not coming to tell me the number of Aden, That's coming to tell me how long the stira needs to be. All right. So according to Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda understands Rabbi Eliezer, not like our Mishnah understands him, but Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda understands Rabbi Eliezer to be one, two, one. Okay? So just, just so you understand, there are different, there's a Mishnaic understanding of Rabbi Eliezer, and there's a Brisa understanding of Rabbi Eliezer. The Mishnaic understanding of Rabbi Eliezer is two, one, one. The Brisa understanding of Rabbi Eliezer, which is in the name of Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, is one, one two, two one. one. So the Chachamim are now going to turn their attention to this Brisa understanding of Rabbi Eliezer. And they're going to say, listen, Rabbi, Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, in your understanding of Rabbi Eliezer, you might have psukim that support you, right? Which he did have, right? The juxtaposition of Kinui and Tuma. Right. You might have psukim that support you, but logically, say the Chachamim, this is dangerous territory. Ein ledavar sof. That's what the Chachamim say to Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda. Right? Hey, Shivu Chachamim. The Chachamim responded <coughs> to this position of Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda by the Chachamim saying, Ein ledavar sof. Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, your understanding of Rabbi Eliezer is dangerous. Ain ledav ourself. What does it mean, ain ledav ourself? So the Gemara is going to tell us what ain ledav ourself means. My nihu. What does ain ledav ourself mean? What do those words mean? My. What are they? Nihu. What are they? What do these words mean? So the Rabbanan are going to say, dezimnin delokani. There are going to. It's possible that you'll have a time where the husband did not warn the wife in the presence of two witnesses. How many witnesses does he need to warn her according to the way Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda understands Rabbi Eliezer? One. one. But he didn't even do it in the front of one witness, right? Zimnin Delokani. He did not give her a warning at all in front of one witness, in front of any witnesses. He didn't give her a warning. Va'amar, and he'll say, Kanai, I gave her a warning. Right? Couldn't so give happen, me. Couldn't that happen any time? The husband, let's say, gets angry or he's in a bad mood. No, it can only happen according to Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda. Why? Because you only need one. Because according to Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, you, you only, only need, need one, one he, witness, he, he, he and that witness. one witness can even be the husband. <laughs> Right. So, That's what I'm so, so what are the chachamim? Yeah, the husband lying or being, you know, whatever, he's just angry or... Yeah, you would correct. Need, you would need, you, logically, you would need to. That's exactly what the chachamim say. Exactly right. Exactly your position. The chachamim turn to Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda, and they say, your, your position of what Rabbi Eliezer says is not logical. Why? Because it's open to all kinds of misuse. You know, to all kinds of, thank you, of abuse. Unless there's one and you exclude the husband as a witness. 
Correct. But that's not what, when they, when we say one, right. it's v'af, one v'af, the husband, right? Right? V'af, al, right? V'af es atzmo, even himself. So that's what Rebbe Yossi, Rebbe Yehuda's position is. Rebbe Yossi, Rebbe Yehuda, in the Brisa says, Rebbe Eliezer says, one, two, one. two, one. But that first one can even be himself. himself. So the Chacham, you say, it doesn't make any sense. Ain la davar sof. Why? Because let's say the husband didn't warn her in the presence of any witnesses. And then decided... No, then you're still stira, there's still two people. No, in other words, the husband didn't warn her. So if the husband didn't warn her... She's still secluded. Stira could... there. I mean... She's still secluded and two people see her secluded. She is secluded and two people see her secluded. And it's long enough right? to be secluded. But, but her seclusion and the fact that two people see her secluded has no significance ba- without, a, without a kinu. Well, for purposes of Sota. Right? Yeah, for Sota, but it's still, it's still a... Right, problem. for purposes of Sota. It's, it might be improper. Right, right? It, might, it might be improper. Right? But... Even, in other words, maybe she's, she's doing the wrong thing by being secluded with this person. But still divorced, from the perspective of, the from the voice. perspective of Sota, it's irrelevant. Right. right, it's irrelevant. But let's say the husband gets angry, and now he's going to come along, and what is he going to, or let's say the husband decides, you know what, I want to divorce her. Right. I want to give I her. Her. I want to divorce her. No, I didn't he comes along and he says, I warned her. Yeah, but he didn't warn her. So what is it? It's her word against his. She says, what are you, you never warned me. He says, what are you talking about? I warned you. So now we're, we're, we're in a situation where the kinui, according to Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda's understanding of Rabbi Eliezer, the kinui is valid. The stira is valid. The stira always go. was valid because there were two witnesses. The stira is valid. And now what can the husband do? The well, husband, so the husband can now him. take her to Bezdin. I take her to, mm-hmm. to drink to the base of Migdash to drink the water. Right? He can take her to the base of Migdash to drink the water. She might want to, she might say at this point, you know what? I'm not going to the I'm not going to the base of Migdash okay. to drink the water. You know, I'm gonna get divorced and she'll agree to be divorced. So what the Chachamim are saying is that this opens up that, that the way in which Rabbi Yosei, Rabbi Yehuda understands this, the potential for abuse is significant. Mm-hmm. The potential for abuse is significant. Okay? But if she doesn't want a divorce, she can also go to the basement and defend it. That can be divorced. If she doesn't want a divorce, she could... No, she can go through the whole thing and be proven innocent. Right. And the king can divorced. still get divorced. But she can still, she's still divorced. She can still divorce her. It's just how much money she gets in divorce. That's all it's about. Right? As she gets pregnant. He can always divorce her anytime he wants. Well, well, maybe. It's all about the money. It's all it's ever about. Maybe. <clears throat> okay. So, Heshivu Chachamim, the Diva Rabbi Yossi, the Diva Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda, by saying, Ein Ladav Arsof, my Nihu, what does it mean, Ein Ladav Arsof? The Zimnin, the Lokani, there will be times where there was no warning. The Amar Kanai, and he'll say, he'll say what? He'll say, I gave her a warning. So, wait a second, Chachamim, you're worried only about Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda's interpretation of Rabbi Yezer? Hala Mishnah Tenu, Yesh Ladav Arsof? What does our Mishnah say? What does our Mishnah say? What is the opinion of Rabbi Eliezer and our Mishnah? But it was two, two one, one. one one. Or two one one. Yeah. The opinion of Rabbi Eliezer and our Mishnah is two one one. Right. Why can't you say Ein la davar sof to that? In other words, the Chachamim. Well, say the one could be him. Yeah. Sure. Look at the Mishnah. What does the Mishnah say? For any of the ones? Okay. I don't know. What does the Mishnah say? Go back and look at the Mishnah. The Mishnah says, Rebbe Eliezer Omer, Mekana la al pi shnaim, umashke al pi eid echad, o al pi atzmo. Could be himself. So, why, the Gemara says, why, Chachami, are you worried about abuse only in the case of 
the way Rabbi Eliezer is understood by Rabbi Yossi, by Rabbi Yehuda, you're not worried about abuse the way Rabbi Eliezer appears in our Mishnah? Right? Because the way, the way it appears in our Mishnah is, let's say that, let's say that there were no witnesses to Stira. He, right, there were witnesses to Kinui, correct? This is the Rabbi Eliezer of our Mishnah. Rabbi Eliezer of our Mishnah requires two, one, one. There were witnesses to, to Kinui, but there were no witnesses to Stira. And along comes the husband and says, I saw her alone with this guy for the required amount of time. Isn't that an abuse? That's what the Gemara is saying. The Gemara is saying, Chachamim, you're worried about the abuse the way in which Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda understands Rabbi Eliezer, you should be also worried about the abuse the way our Mishnah understands Rabbi Eliezer. So far, so good? Yes. Everybody's with me? Yes. Yeah? So the Gemara says that what happens... Um, Okay, um, so Yeshiva Chacham and Levi Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yehuda ain't the dove herself. My time, uh, uh, I'm sorry, I no, I skipped the place. Okay, the line begins with right. My Yehuda Zimnin the low kani va'amar kanai hala mishnatenu yesh the dove herself. Right? Can you say that? Can can't you apply the same thing by our Mishnah? You say ain't the dove herself to Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Yehuda Chachamim. <coughs> But that would mean that by our Mishnah you hold yesh ladav herself. In other words, it's not open to abuse. Isn't it also open to abuse on our Mishnah? Zimnin dulo is tater. There will be times where there was no stira, the amar, and what will the husband say? Is tater. The husband will say, "Hey, there was stira." So that's also an abuse. So says the Gemara. Wait a second, Chachamim. For you to say there's only an abuse, there's only potential for abuse the way Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda interprets wrong. Rabbi Eliezer, that's wrong. There is... Anytime, only the husband has to be the right? one. Right? The Mishnah, the Rabbi Eliezer of our Mishnah is also open to abuse. So the Chachamim respond... Amar Rav Yitzchak Bar Yosef, Amar Rabbi Yochanan, Rav Yitzchak Bar Yosef says in the name of Rabbi Yochanan, you're right. There's potential for abuse in, any of in either of those cases. And therefore they changed the wording of the Chachamim to be Va'af Lidire Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda, Ein Ladav Arsof. What did they change the words of the Chachamim to read? Not only Ladivre Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda ain't Ladav herself, but Vaaf Ladivre Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda ain't Ladav herself. What did they add? And they were they add the word Af. The word Af means the word Af is a short for Afilu, even according. In other words, according to the way Rebbe Yitzchak Rebbe Yosef understands the Chachamim. The Chachamim didn't just say, Ledivre Rebbe Yosef, Rebbe Yehuda, ain't Ledav herself. The Chachamim said, Af Ledivre Rebbe Yosef, Rebbe Yehuda, ain't Ledav herself. What, what, how does, the, including the word Af, how does that help? It means that they, they knew it according to our Mishnah, and even his new interpretation <coughs> is susceptible to the same. Event. In other words, yes, according to our Mishnah, ain't Ledav herself, it's open to abuse. And af, and even according to the way Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Yehuda interprets Rabbi Eliezer, it's open to abuse. Okay, let's just stop here for a second. Just want to make sure that we're on the right. The only way to resolve this is two, two, two. I haven't. I haven't got. I just want to. I just right. I just want to. I just want to make sure that we're on the same page. It's never two, two, two. Exactly. If it's two, two, two. If it's two, two, two. If it's two, 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 we kill her. All right. It's, so it has to be two two one. So we're two, we're two, talking no, about two two one. Be one can never be him. The, the, That's all this is saying. right. The only way, yeah, in other words, him. by definition, one could be him. In other words, once we're saying one witness is sufficient, and we're that means we're already we've already thrown the classical definition of witnesses 
out the window. In other words, whenever we say one witness is sufficient, meaning we've already thrown the classical definition of, uh, of witnesses out the window, then one could be him. So based on that, the how is correct. The only way there's no abuse in the system is if we say two, two, one, which is the position of Rebbe Yehoshua. But whether we say the position of Rebbe Eliezer is two, one, one, like our Mishnah, or we say the position of Rebbe Eliezer is one, two, one, like our Brisa, it doesn't matter. There is the possibility of abuse of the system. And the Gemara acknowledges that. And the Gemara therefore changes the wording of the Chachamim not to say Ledivre Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda ain't Ledav herself, but Af Ledivre Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda ain't Ledav herself, meaning certainly by our Mishnah ain't Ledav herself, and Af, even according to Rebbe Yosi Rebbe Yehuda, ain't Ledav herself. Okay? So in, in that formulation, <clears throat> listen to my formulation again, certainly in our Mishnah, Ain't Ladav herself. Va'af, and even according to Rabbi Yosei, Rabbi Yehuda, Ain't Ladav herself. Which case is the abuse more possible? The Kino. Yeah. The Kino. I need, you to, I need you to answer me with either Mishnah right. or Rabbi Yosei, Rabbi Yehuda. Yosei, All right? Yosei. In this formulation, okay. certainly in our Mishnah, Ain't the dove ourself, but even in the case of Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yehuda, ain't the dove ourself. Which, in which, in which case, in which case, now, certainly in our Mishnah, ain't the dove ourself, but even in the case You're of. You're saying it was less likely in the Bryce. In which case is it less likely? Well, from less that likely wording, it sounds the like the Bryce. Yeah, the Bryce. It would be the Bryce. In other words, we're saying certainly in our Mishnah there's potential for abuse, but even according to or and even, even according to Brisa, even in the Brisa, there's possibility for abuse, which would seem to make a statement saying that there's more certainty of abuse in the Mishnah the than there the is in the Brisa. Right? There's more certainty of abuse in the Mishnah than there is in the Brisa. We come to that conclusion because of the formulation. In other words, whenever you have a formulation of and even, if you say A and even B, the strongest case is in A. B is a weaker case, but you're adding it on. In other words, A, there it's very strong, and even B. But we'll even include B where it's not as strong. So what they're saying is the Mishnah here, there's a very strong possibility of abuse, and we'll even add the Brisa where there's a possibility of abuse. The Gemara says, wait a second. That doesn't make sense, right? Because if I'm looking to see where is there a stronger possibility of abuse, in the Mishnah or the Brisa, granted that there's a possibility of abuse in either one, according to Rebbe Eliezer, where is the greater possibility of abuse? The Why? No, greater possibility of abuse in the Mishnah. Sounds like in the Mishnah. No, the the Bryce Bryce why? Tell me, tell me why. Because the Mishnah is only giving you the one, the, the one example. What does the Mishnah say? Tell me again what the Mishnah says. It's, it's not putting and also. It's not adding the... Right, no. The two no, for two for the the line. Forget the language. Two Forget the language. I have Mishnah. Right. Two, one, one, I have one, Mishnah 2-1-1 two, two, one, one, and Brisa 1-2-1. Which case is more likely to be abused? 2-1-1, Mishnah, or 1-2-1, Rebbe Yosef, Rebbe Yehuda? 1-2-1. One, 1-2-1, two, one, two, one. Two, one. why? Because the husband and wife are together all the time. Wait, because why? Husband and wife are together all the time, so the notion that he warns her is, is easier to lie about than they're having been together. You had to have two witnesses to them, to him warning her. That's like the precursor. That you know, if that happened, then but she should know better. Not to be. She shouldn't be alone. With, All right. So 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 let's 
Right. right. So let's look at it this After way. After he sees the two of them right. together, he can well, somebody the comes along is more prone to abuse. Because once you start off with just one. The brysa is more prone to abuse. That's precisely what we're right. saying. That's what we're the brysa right. is more prone to abuse. Why? Because in the Mishnah, in the Mishnah, you've started already, right? In the Mishnah, you've started already. The expression is yesh raglayim ladavar. In other words, in the Mishnah, he warned her in the presence of two people. So whatever's going to happen has got legs already, right? In other words, he, the process began correctly in the presence of two people. He warned her that there was obviously something going on because he warned her in the presence of two people. Now he comes along and says, hey, I saw her along with that guy. Yes, it's possible that that's abuse, but it's also possible that it's true, true because after all, he warned her in the presence of two witnesses. Whereas the other way around, when it's one, two, one. He may have never known anything. Right? He never warned her. Somebody, somebody right. got two people. There was, her, remember, there was no, right? right? Uh, now there were two people who saw her together with somebody else. Now we can come along and say, oh, I warned her. The potential for abuse is greater in the Brisa than in the Mishnah. If the potential for abuse is greater in the Brisa than in the Mishnah, the wrong. then the Af is in the wrong place. Right? The Af is in the wrong place. Because the af, the way it is, indicates the potential for abuse is greater in the Mishnah than in the, in the Bryce of Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Huda. Okay. So let's come back and see that. Says the Gemara. <laughs> says the Gemara. Af ledivrei Rabbi Yosef, Rabbi Yehuda. I'm sorry. Zimnin de lo istat ve'am istat. Amar Rabbi Yitzchak Rabbi Yosef. Amar Rabbi Yochanan. Af ledive Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yehuda. That was what the Chachamim said. Af ledive Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yehuda. Ein ledavar so. Says says the Gemara. Af ledive Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yehuda. Right, right. That that you're saying that that the stronger point is right. The stronger point is the less likely, right. Below me by lemishna seinu adaraba lemishna seinu ika ikar. Right. In other words, where is the where is the essential for mis for misuse? Right. According to according to this opinion of Af the Divre Rabbi Yosef Rabbi Yehuda, that is implying that the Mishnah is more that abuse is more likely in the Mishnah. The Mishnah is more susceptible abuse than the Brisa, and that doesn't make any sense. Right. Because says the Gemara, Ella i itmar hachi itmar. If you're going to try to include the Mishnah as well as the Brisa, you should say it this way. Amar Rebbe Yitzchak bar Yosef, Amar Rebbe Yochanan, Ledivre Rebbe Yosef, Rebbe Yehuda. And the af le Mishnah say no ain't ledavar so. In other words, what do you have to do? You have to reverse the, reverse the order. First you mention the Brisa, first the Chachami mentioned the Brisa, and then after the Chachami mentioned the Brisa, they say V'af, and even according to our Mishnah. Right? Even according to our Mishnah. Okay. So basically, what have we said? We've said that there is potential for abuse whenever one witness is required. The only time, the only situation where there is no potential for abuse is Rabbi Hoshua's opinion, who says two, two, one. But whether we go by the Mishnah that says two, one, one, or whether we go by the Brisa, that's the Brisa, no, whether we go by the Mishnah that says Rabbi, Yo, Rabbi Eliezer in the Mishnah, who says two, one, one, or whether we go according to Rabbi Eliezer in the Brisa that says one, two, one, in both of those cases, there is potential for abuse. Where is there greater likelihood for abuse in the case of the brysa, right? In the case of the brysa, there is one, two, one, there is greater likelihood for abuse because there was no raglayim ladavar. Whereas in two, one, one, at least there was raglayim ladavar. Okay, so clear as mud? Mm -hmm. yeah. We can look at it the opposite way too. Yeah. And say she wants to get out of the marriage, so she's... Go ahead. What do you want to say, Derek? No, she, she wants to get out of the... her, her 
settlement. Yeah, but you know what? She, she, she wants to get, he's not giving it. Right, she's not giving it again. Right? So therefore... This is a nice way to force this a This is get, a nice right? way to force a get. Right. <clears throat> How is this a nice way to force a get? Because he, could, he can say, I won't warrant her, or, or she was warned well, enough. He still has to say it. That's the right. Yeah. <laughs> she can't force him to say it. No, but she could be secluded. Although, uh, she could, secluded with two people. When two people she could, her, so what? She could hang around, like she could hang around with Chaim and have her husband warn her. Right. And then she could, I know was, this is it. She wants to get out of the marriage. And then she could be alone with Chaim and, and just refuse. to watch her. Right? And, she, and, she, and all <coughs> she has to do is admit that she was alone with Chaim for that period of time that was necessary. And she'll admit to it, and she'll get divorced. She won't get her ksuba, but she'll get divorced. There's no way for her to get divorced with her ksuba once she's in this position. Correct. Okay, right. good. No, I was, it didn't really matter at that point. Okay, so let's go, let's continue on with the Gemara. Uh, and the Gemara says as follows. So we are now one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight lines up from the bottom of the page. To be five, I think. Right? 2B5, eight lines up from the bottom of the page. The first word on the line is sof. We're going to start with the second. I'm a Rabbi Hanina Misura. Rabbi, Hanini, Rabbi Hanina from Sura came along and said as follows Lo lema inish le bizman hazeh, lo tistere bahadi ploni. We've learned this actually once before. Rabbi Hanina from Surah said that a man should not say to his wife, Bizman hazeh, in our time, meaning in a time where there's no base on Migdash, don't be secluded with Ploni. Why? Dilma kaimalan ke Rabbi Yossi Yehuda. Because maybe we will follow, maybe the opinion of Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda is true. In other words, remember, what was Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda's opinion? Rabbi Yossi Rabbi Yehuda's opinion was one, two, one. So if a man says to his wife, don't be alone with so-and-so, that's one. That's kinui that's of one. one. And now she's together with, a, well, with the same guy, and two people see it. What happens? She can't go back. She can't be with him, but we can't, can't, she can't him. do the sota. She, she can't. We can't do the sota because there's no base hamigdash. <coughs> the base hamigdash was required <coughs> for sota, so she just becomes prohibited forever to her husband, <coughs> and she becomes prohibited forever <coughs> to whoever is and the she's suspect. Still married, though. What? She's still married. He doesn't have to divorce her. Hmm. No, he divorces her. He has to. He divorce. Yes, she can't live. They can't live together. That doesn't mean they have to be divorced. That's my question. It might not mean in in reality they need to be divorced, but halachically they need to be divorced. But they do? Yeah. He has to divorce them. You can't live in the same house. Okay. But that's not, I mean, there's plenty of men and women that all live together today who are married, and men refuse to give again. There's a whole world of that goes on out there. So... He does this one. I mean, I, we say we're not supposed to do that, but he warns her, and then two people see them together. We have no solution in the base of Mikdash. We, we have, we have no. So what happens? We have he refuses no, to divorce her. We have, we have no solution. Right. So he doesn't divorce her. So then, technically, no. She, married. the base then will. He has to be. He's forced to divorce her. With the ksuba. Or right. No? He's forced to divorce her. And he has to give her her. No, he doesn't have to give her the ksuba. He's forced so to divorce her. That's the same but result just, as, sure as would have sure. happened under Sota. But what if she doesn't, what if he doesn't want to? Why is that the same result that would have happened under Sota? Because <clears throat> if she didn't go through in the base of Mikdash, she would be divorced without her. Right? Mm-hmm. The Sota oh, process. I hear what you're saying. Right? So, so in other words, she would have to acknowledge. In the Sota process, she'd either have to drink it or accept it. Or, or, or acknowledge or it. Right. Here she doesn't get that choice. She doesn't have to admit it. She doesn't get it. She's divorced anyway. Is what you're saying, and I wasn't even talking about that. I was just saying, he just says, I'm not giving her a get. We have, we have plenty of men out there today that won't give a get. Our Gemara says, right, our Gemara says that you shouldn't do this because right. maybe the halacha is like Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi right, Yehuda, the Amar Kinui al Piatzmo, Umistatra, and therefore, she, and she then went ahead and had Stira. 
There's no waters of the Sota to check her out. The Ka'asar La Iluya Isura de la Olam. And she will she will be forever she will be forever forbidden to him. Right. So you're saying Okay. Okay, so what? That's not a divorce. I mean, so, halakhically, he can have another wife. He didn't have to divorce her. She can't live with him. She can, so what? He may have to, I understand, he may have to support her and, and you know, right? If, if they're still married, he has to support her, even if she's forbidden to him. So you're saying, what's the big deal about doing this? No, so what what's the word? I mean, I, she doesn't die. She's forbidden to him. He doesn't divorce her. She becomes like an aguna, right? I mean, she, she's, you know... In that suspended state. I don't know. No, if she's divorced, you know what? If he divorces her. So you're saying so that we I, could... I, I'm saying, what if there was two witnesses? You're asking, two, you're asking it whether... It one, two, one, yeah, or two, two. The same. There was two and two. But let, it's not the same as you have two witnesses yeah. that heard him warn The keynote. Right. She goes and she spends time with him anyhow. So he's allowed, but he says, you know what? I don't care if he was, she was with Moshe... I no, he's not her. allowed to do it. He can't but stay married. Said, I'm not give the, he I'm can't not stay. Give he can't yet. stay married to her. No, he can't continue to live with her as a husband and wife. Married to her, but he can <clears> remain. <throat> that's the question. That's what we're trying to say. On le- he can and I don't understand I, this position of, of you shouldn't do one and then two because we don't have sota. Is it okay to do two and two? We still don't have sota. You're in the same spot, one and two or two and two. What's the difference? You had Kinui, you had Stira, you don't have you don't have the Soto water, so there's no way to prove it. See, what, what so, it's one and all two right, or so, two and two. Okay, so I'm not sure he has to divorce her, right? Mm-hmm. In other words, yeah. maybe maybe they can, can he can continue to be married to her and just and she is Asura to him. Right, mm-hmm. but then he has right? to support her too. And he he might have to support her, and obviously they can't be together be Yichud, right? Right, but. You're saying theoretically, theoretically, she could just continue forever in this never, never state. Yeah, she mm-hmm. could just be in suspension. Right, she could continue forever in this never, never state. So I, I'm agreeing with you. I'm not sure I have to think about it, but well, right now I'm agreeing with you, right. right, and saying that, yes, maybe she can continue on in this, in this never, never state. But the Gemara, mm-hmm. seems, the Gemara mm-hmm. seems to be saying that... We don't want her to continue on in this never, never state. <clears throat> in other words, we want there to be some kind of resolution. And, <clears throat> and I don't, I, uh, so what you're really asking is, let's, let's go back to the days when there's a base of Migdash. Yeah. Right, there is a base of Migdash. Let's even say that it's 2-2, two, two, it right? Matter. There we were two witnesses, right? There were two witnesses Just who, two witnesses who heard the Kinui, two witnesses who saw her secluded, right. All right, and now, what are and now and now what happens? Right? And now it. and now what happens? In other words, can he at this point simply divorce her? Right. Simply divorce her without her ksuba? Right. And the answer is no. Why? She either has to admit it. She either has to admit it, or, or she has to, or she has to drink the waters. If she doesn't admit it. We force her to drink the right. waters. We literally pour the waters down her throat. Right. So there are, there is definitely going to be a resolution yeah, here. No There's going to be a resolution. Either she's going to admit right. it, and if she admits it, then he he has to divorce her. Right. If she admits that she committed adultery, he has to divorce mm-hmm. her mm-hmm. without her ksuba, and he can't just stay married to her. Right. Okay. He can't just stay married to her and support her. He has to divorce her. And if she won't admit it, then we're going to force her to drink this water, right? So, so that's the situation when there is a base of Migdash. Now there is no base of Migdash. Let's even assume two witnesses so why, heard. Yeah, why doesn't Rabbi Hanin and Yisur just come along and say, "Don't warn her"? He makes a big deal of "Don't warn her." One, two. If it's two, two, what's the difference? There's still no resolution. There's no way to ever resolve that. One, two is not the problem. It's the fact that we don't have the, 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 the whatever, May Soto or whatever. Well, I, I, think that, I think that's indeed what he's saying. In other words, he's not saying, he's not saying that the husband shouldn't... He, he, the implication here is that it's two. 
Okay, so it's saying, two. Don't, don't ever warn her. In other words, don't warn her, meaning don't warn her, warn her in the presence of one or two. Whatever one or two, two. right? Yeah, right. Certainly, don't warn her in the presence of two, but don't even warn her in the presence of one, because if you warn her in the presence of one, meaning even I just yourself, right. that may, maybe we say Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Yehuda is okay. is la halacha. Is there a duration for the warning? What does that mean? You warn your wife not to be with Moshe. Fifteen years later, she's with Moshe. Was the warning still good? I, I'm not sure. I don't know what the time frame is, but we'll have to. Yeah. I'm sure we'll come to it. Okay, I'm sure we'll come to it. Except for fraud. Okay. <laughs> Um, so lo leme inish le isisei bismana zeh. In other words, you should not say to your wife bismana zeh. Certainly, if there are two witnesses listening, but even if there is just you, lo tistere bahadi ploni, because dilma kaimalan ki Rebbe Yosi, Rebbe Yehuda da Amar Kinu yapi atzmo mistatra veleka ha'ina me sota le mibdaka la iluha isura de la olam. She will be forever prohib prohibited to him. It's not a situation that we that we want to exist, where she will be forever prohibited to him. Can it exist? I, I mean, I'm not sure. In other words, is he obligated to give her a divorce if she is forbidden to him, or can can he continue to support her, continue to stay married to her, but not live with her? Yeah, how do we get past that voluntary? Right, so I have to, That's it's an interesting... And also, and also yeah. why would someone want to do that? But that doesn't... Why do they do it today? It happens now. They want to punish her for the rest of her life. I'm sure she can't be with anybody, she can't live with anybody. That's what happens all the time. I mean, look, well, that's uh, what Agun is. That's exactly what Ron is saying. Why? That, well, yeah, because a rational person may be not, but, you know... But in Aguna, they're not supporting her. Right. Okay, in other words, here... Are, listen. Here wife, they would have listen, to support her. Uh, let's say the South Shore. The wife sprays, and then, and, okay, and then, and then, and then, and then finds out, and then he says, "Listen, he wants he, he to stay. I'm not going to divorce you. We have kids. I'll support you, and we'll we'll we'll, have, we'll sleep in separate rooms. I mean, I'm sure that's we can't happening. be in the same house. Okay, whatever. Okay, uh, the garage. Or so. I'll, I'll stay in the garage. No, it can't be in the. Okay. That doesn't work. All right, the uh, garage. Uh, there, there are things like that. The what are you sleeping in? Or have an apartment. Yeah. I have an apartment. You'll sleep in the apartment, and I'll stay here with the kids in the yeah. house. I'm sure something like this happened. I don't know. I don't know. It's happened on the North Shore too. Yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Y
doesn't want to be divorced. And they go to Besdin. And all the wife has done has been to burn the toast. I don't think Besdin will allow there to be a get. Okay, well, I'm, I'm not sure. How do we know that? I mean... But you don't even need the post being burned. Right. The wife, the get has to be given and she has to accept it. No. Yes. She has to receive it. I don't think she has to accept it. Because she does. The... No. no. Wait a second. Let's back up for a second. <laughs> or a little bit, a little bit of field here. <laughs> the husband has to willingly give the get. Right. Right. And the wife has to willingly receive the receive get. Receive it. Right. So let's say the husband wants to divorce his wife for whatever reason. He goes before Bez and he says, she smells. Right? She smells. I don't want to divorce. I can't live with her anymore. And he writes the bill of divorce. Right? And the, gives it to the Bezdin. And the Bezdin goes to give it to her. And she says, no, I don't I'm want it. I don't want it. I'm not taking it. So what's the halacha? They're not divorced. They're not divorced. What do you, what's the halacha? What happens? Uh, it depends. Depends. They're not divorced. Well, he doesn't, he doesn't have to support her. On her status. For instance, if she's taken up with another person, it could be given to an aide on her behalf to hold for her if she wants to come and get it because her status is now as an adulteress and uh, the base that is more concerned about it. All right, let's say that's not the case. Okay, sorry. Mm -hmm. that, I mean, you happen to be right, halacha mm lamaisa, -hmm. but let's assume that's not the case. Right? Let's assume that she's been a good girl. She's been a good girl. <laughs> And the husband has uh, set his eyes on someone else and comes and, you know, goes to Bezdin and writes out the get. And Bezdin goes to deliver it to her and she says, I don't want it. I'm not accepting it. It's against my will. I don't want to be divorced. What happens? They're not divorced. That's what no, we're we're not, we're not divorced. know what happens. Are they forbidden to each other? No. They're Nothing not has happened. happened. They're not divorced, right. and the husband <clears throat> has to continue to support her. To support her. Yeah. All right? The husband has to continue to support her. Is there a way out for the husband? There is a way out for the husband. It's called, it's called Heter, Heter de Meir Rabbanim. You've got to get 100 rabbis. got to get 100 rabbis across three different continents. <laughs> To agree <laughs> to sign a to sign a, a, a document, waiver. a waiver. A, a what's it a waiver of? That she accepted voluntarily. No, it's a waiver of the prohibition of having more than one wife. In other words, as long as she does not accept that get, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? She is she married is married to him. To him. But Midi Midi and he's, could have had another wife anyway. All right, but we don't. But we're, yeah, we we. But we don't operate with the Arisa no. today. You get a hundred rabbis, three continents that exist today. It, it, it is easier today than ever. It, it exists. Very, it very, exists very, today. Is it common? Um, is it is it common? Let's put it this way. I have been approached once in my thirty years to sign on to such a document. Only once in my thirty years. They did. Yes, they did. It was a very valid, it was a very, in other words, it was a very valid case. Mm -hmm. You know, sometimes you have unique kinds of circumstances, like, uh, let's say the wife has had a mental illness, a, a mental illness or a stroke, or, yeah. or she's in a vegetative state. And, so she's not and the husband <laughs> is willing, the <laughs> husband is willing to support her. He's willing to take care of her. He's willing to take care of all of the medical expenses. He's he willing to do all that. these things. But right? He wants to marry him. So yeah. under those circumstances, you know, though, we can argue those are unique kinds of circumstances. Right? So sometimes... So he him to take care of her once you would like well, he has to put up, still married. He has to, and in this particular case, the, in the particular case that I got connected about, if I recall correctly, he actually put the money into escrow. Mm -hmm. Right, he put the money into escrow so that she would always be taken be care of. Right, she would always the money before before this was done. The money was put into escrow, hmm. so it's an interesting an interesting kind of situation. Okay, this we'll stop here and dab a